The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb, and she saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran to, and, and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down and he looked in, and he saw linen wrapping lying there, but he didn't go in. And then Simon Peter came, followed him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up all by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead, and then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you had carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. This is the night where we worship together as a community of faith gathered together in this, the Easter vigil, where the veils of darkness fall away as we move toward the light of Easter. We just listened to the Apostle Paul tell us that this is a movement toward life, that Christ died and we are baptized into his death, that Christ was buried, we are buried with him, and that Christ was raised from the dead and we are raised with him, we are united with him in his death and his resurrection that we live with him right here, right now, on this night. We gather at the font, we gather at the table around the flickering flame of the new fire, and we listen to these ancient stories from our ancient book, stories that shed light on God's mighty acts in human history, because we're not alone this evening. Standing in our midst are the first people those made in God's image. The Hebrews, as they cross the Red Sea, the prophets pointing us to God that is with us even in our distress, and those three delivered from the fiery furnace. The same God who acted in their lives will not fail to act in ours. This is the night. We get to gather and retell our own stories as well, which are really prayers of those ancient wounds that need to be healed by the risen one, healed within us, within the church, within the world. Like our first parents, we all deal with shame. We deal with that longing. We deal with fear. Like the Hebrews, we have experienced suffering of body, mind, and spirit. Like the prophets, we've longed for a place to be, a place to land, a place to call home, where we might live in faithfulness to God and faithfulness to each other. Well, this is the night. Gathering at the water to be reminded of the sea of God's infinite love. In the valley of the dry bones that come to life, we are filled with creative and prophetic spirit of God's own very breath. We gather in the promised land. We gather in the upper room by the foot of the cross at this table in order to be fed by the paschal lamb, the body and blood of the redeemer, the bread of life, the cup of salvation. This is is the night where God has chosen 
us. God has chosen us to bear witness to what our ancestors in faith just longed to see and what our world so desperately is yearning for. Our humanness, our brokenness, our being rendered powerless by the power of God, of God's own love. This is the night. And on this night, Christ, who shall never die again, gathers us all together, yearning to be revealed to the world through each and every one of us, his wounded and yet holy assembly of believers, baptized into his death, buried with him, raised with him again this night so that we might walk in a new way. We are gathered in this space between God and humanity, between heaven and earth, between our pain and God's healing given to us through one of us, our Lord Jesus, who tears away the veil of darkness. For on this night, Mary discovers light that shines. Water brings life to these old vessels. Bread is broken by broken people made whole. So let us stand together, let us sing together, preparing our hearts and minds for God's word to break the darkness. This is the night Easter is here. Amen.